Our first reading today is found on page 731. It is from Isaiah chapter 55, verses 6 through 9. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours and my thoughts than your thoughts. This is the word of the Lord. Our psalm is found on page 543. It is psalm number 27, verses 1 through 9. Please read responsively. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise against me, yet I will be confident. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me. And answer me. Hide not your face from me. Turn not your servant away in anger. O you who have been my help, cast me not off, forsake me not. O God of my salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading today is from Philippians. At this time, Paul was under house arrest, and the people of Philippi had sent money to him to help him with his expenses, so he was writing letters to them. So it is from Philippians chapter 1, verses 12 through 14, and 19 through 30. I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers, having become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. For I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out to be my deliverance as it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed that with full courage now, as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor labor for me. Yet, which shall I choose, I cannot tell. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith, so that in me you may have ample cause to glory in Christ Jesus because of my coming to you again. Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, 
I may hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel, and not frightened in anything by your opponents. This is a clear sign to them of their destruction, but of your salvation and that from God. For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ, you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake, engaged in the same conflict that you saw I had and now hear that I still have. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The gospel reading is also taking us down to verse 16. So we'll begin. For the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into the vineyard, and going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And to them he said, You go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right I will give you. So they went, going out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing. And he said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? And he said to them, because no one has hired us. He said to them, go, you go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the laborer and pay them their wage, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the 11th hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now, when those hired came first, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have bur borne the burden of the day in the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I'm doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last worker as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first, and the first last. The Holy Gospel of our Lord. Praise Heavenly Father, thank you for your word that constantly gives us direction, correction, and inspiration. Bless the words of my mouth and bring understanding to those who hear. In the name of Jesus, amen. The last shall be first, and the first last. I sometimes think about that when we stand in line at our family gatherings, when everybody kind of hesitates, and then, and then we go and start the line. In this parable, the owner of the vineyard hires workers at four different times during the day and pays them all the same at the end of the day, no matter how long or how briefly they worked. Those who worked a full day received what they had agreed upon. And they were not cheated in any way. But they grumbled and were unhappy that those who worked less time got the same amount. In our lesson from Isaiah today, God tells us that his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. And as high as the heavens are from the earth, so are his thoughts higher than ours. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, 
that we are to trust in the Lord with all of our heart and not lean on our own understanding. Leaning on our own understanding instead of God's will give us trouble, even when we don't think things are fair. The truth is, and the promise is, that God will work all things out for good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. In this parable, the landowner kept his promise, didn't he? And he paid all the people a full day's wage. God's ways are not our ways. In this parable, God is the landowner and believers in Jesus are the workers. The parable is not about rewards. It's about salvation and the generosity of God. We can think of the story of the thief on the cross. This is a good example of coming in at the 11th hour. He was humble and repentant as he came to realize that Jesus was the Son of God. That must have been a very humbling thing for him to know that he deserved to die, but Jesus didn't. He, he received eternal life along with all of those who had served the Lord their whole lifetime. Jesus paid the price for our salvation. Some people find that wonderful gift early in life, and some people find it late. Some find it in the middle of their life, just like what we saw the different laborers at the different times went into the field. The entrance to the kingdom of heaven is by God's grace alone. The Pharisees were like the first group of workers in the vineyard. They grumbled and were very angry at Jesus. They despised him for offering salvation to the poor sinners that were not worthy like they were. They were jealous of the goodness and the mercy of God. Like the vineyard owner, Jesus keeps his promise of eternal life to all who believe and follow him, no matter if they are first or last. Salvation is much more than any of us deserve. Who are we to argue with the blessings that the Lord chooses to provide and withhold? His ways are not our ways. He calls us to work in his vineyard. There's, there will be some who follow him for a short time, while others will follow him for years. The last will be first, and the first last. This parable is not really about the vineyard laborers. It's about the nature of God, the owner of the vineyard and his extravagant gift of grace that seems to be unfair because he decides to be gracious, loving, forgiving, and merciful to those who don't earn it or deserve it. That's the way God is. The gift of God comes from accepting his invitation to come into his vineyard. In the chapter before this parable for today, which is chapter 19, Jesus talked with the rich young ruler. The rich young ruler came to him and said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, obey the commandments. And he says, I have obeyed the commandments. And Jesus looked at him and smiled and he said, there's one thing that you need to do. You need to sell all you have and give to the poor and come and follow me. Isn't that what the disciples did? When they heard Jesus say, come follow me, they left everything and followed Jesus. 
It was too bad that the rich young ruler did not listen to and follow Jesus. He did not accept his invitation to follow him. There will be many surprises in heaven. God's value system is far different than mankind's. His ways are always higher than ours. Those who think they are deserving, like the Pharisees and the rich young ruler, may be frowned upon, upon by God. And they won't maybe even get into the kingdom of God if they don't humble themselves and follow Jesus. But those who are last, the despised and the rejected, that humbly follow Jesus like the disciples, will be the first in the kingdom of God. We can't get caught up in the world's way of judging things. All who accept the invitation to live for Jesus will receive the kingdom of God. Jesus paid the ultimate price for our sin and gives salvation to all who believe and follow him. Nothing we do can ever match his amazing sacrifice and his death on the cross for all the sins of all the people. He calls us today to work in his vineyard. Whether we labor with him many hours or few, we can't earn that salvation. It's a free gift from God. All believers in Christ Jesus receive this undeserved grace, whether early or late in life. In closing, I found a quote from Billy Graham that is very fit fitting for this parable. He displays an attitude of gratefulness in this, what he has said, or what he did say. He said, I'm not going to heaven because I've preached to great crowds or read the Bible many times. I'm going to heaven, just like the thief on the cross who said in that last moment, Lord, remember me. Let us pray. Lord, help us to fully grasp the extravagant gift that you have given us, even though we have not worked for it or deserve it. Let us respond with great gratitude for your mercy and your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. And now please stand for the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.